Paul Blash here from the airport, getting on a plane, and uh, just was a real privilege to be part of the podcast. And uh, Rob asked me to just sh- give a shout out that uh, I just released a 15th anniversary edition of A Greater Song. And we did six reimagined versions of some of these songs like Hosanna, Because of Your Love, Your Name, uh, You've Been So Good, What Can I Do? Anyway, if you get a chance to check it out, I'd appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy this podcast. It was a, a real vigorous, dynamic discussion on songwriting, writing songs for worship. So God bless you. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Worship God, TGC Canada podcast, equipping worship leaders and worshipers to love Jesus more and to serve people more. We're glad that you do. We're thankful that you do. And uh, we're excited today, uh, Pat Sabell and Rob Brockman and myself, to welcome back once again, uh, Paul Balash, our beloved brother and, and faithful servant of the Lord. Paul, good to see you again. Thanks for coming back with us. Thank you. Good to see Thanks you guys coming, again. Paul. We enjoyed our time hearing your journey last time we were together. And uh, just amazed at God's grace in your life. You've been faithful. And today we want to press in a little bit about songs and songwriting. You have been faithful and had, you get 16 albums out. Is that sort of your catalog approximately? Maybe something like that, probably. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you check CCLI, a lot of people around the world are singing your songs in probably a bunch of languages. Uh, we have loved and, and sung many of them ourselves, our guys here. So we're thankful for your faithfulness, and we would love just to learn how you're doing it, what motivates you, your craft, your skill. And um, so um, I'm going to turn it over to, to Pat. Um, just, you know, teach us uh, today, Paul, about kind of what you're doing as a songwriter. Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, well, Paul, first off, thank you for, for writing the songs that you do. Um, what, what I love about your songs is they always have great melodies. They have what I call simple and yet profound lyrics. Um, and they're very singable for congregations. And, um, so, um, you, you write these simple yet profound songs that churches love to sing. I, I, uh, just thinking of last Sunday, I think it was last Sunday. I, I just busted out the chorus of your name Mm. is a strong and mighty tower. Mm. And, um, you know, there was three songs. We did three songs. It was the end just before our pastor was going to come up and preach, and the, the first three songs was just okay. But when we busted out your name, it was like the church, like everybody knew it. It was so yes. familiar and it was so, it was simple. And yet it was absolutely profound. Nothing has the power to save. And so, um, yeah, just love your songs. And um, uh, um, I guess the question I would have is, could you tell us a little bit about your songwriting process? Um, because yeah, your songs are being sung everywhere and, and we love to sing them. And maybe you could give us a nugget that would just help us all. There's people listening in that are trying to write songs. Uh, tell us a bit about your process and how you, you write these songs. Okay. Well, thanks, Pat. A lot of nice things you said there. So thank you, brother, for the encouragement. And uh, that is encouraging to hear it's beyond what I could ever possibly ask or think because I I mean this sincerely, when I was beginning to write songs, it was 100% for our church. Hmm. There was no social media. There was no, I didn't have the faith to believe that maybe someday I'll do a CD. I I didn't even have that dream because I was like, I'm more of just the guitar player guy and maybe we'll write some songs for our church. And hey, remember that thing pastor was teaching on like three weeks ago? Uh, man, that would be so cool to have a song like that would kind of summarize that, like a chorus. And so what, what was it about? You know, da, da, da. So a lot of the beginnings of my songwriting was, was based on being in a local church, having the opportunity to lead worship week after week, having a keyboard player that him and I, there was a, there was a good connection there. He was more of a classical background. Mm. I was from a uh, more of a, you know, self-taught rock and roll background, if you will. So it was like a, and at one point, you know, he would, he would write a chorus or just have a chorus. And he, at the end of maybe the third or fourth song, he'd say, you know, um, if you don't mind uh, pastor church, it's just a simple chorus that uh, 
And I was so inspired by that. Like, wow, just, just like that. You just share a chorus. It wasn't like a two verses and a chorus and a bridge and a guitar solo. It was just like a little chorus idea. Hmm. So I would say step one is just be on the lookout for a little idea, just a little chorus idea. Hmm. Um, don't despise small beginnings, just a, a little, a prayerful idea. Um, um, and again, just your motivations. Don't think about trying to write some big song that will be on the radio or something. That just poisons the well. It just mm -hmm. takes the joy out of it. Um, takes the joy out of just be with a childlike heart. Say, man, wouldn't it be cool if like someday, maybe out of 10 songs we write, if one of them, our church actually sang it, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as you were mentioning a couple songs, just in the intro here, um, I was thinking, wow, if you knew how many songs, hundreds of songs you've never heard <laughs> that I've written, that I thought were good enough, that I actually sure. put the time into making a demo mm. and sending it in and thinking that, oh man, they're going to love this. And no, they're in the basement somewhere. I don't know, at Integrity Music. or <laughs> yeah. They never saw the light of day. So I have to be upfront, honest and say, you know, it makes me look good be like oh that song or this song yeah but there are literally hundreds mm. of songs that i thought were good enough to demo that you've never heard that i thought were really good and then in hindsight we're like mm, it's okay right, right. so I, I would say you know use that muscle you exercise that muscle um in hebrews right they exercise their spiritual senses mm -hmm. you know so exercise that songwriting muscle if that's something that you feel drawn to but keep it simple in the beginning sing scripture sing your prayers mm -hmm. just those two things i would say forget about trying to write some big classic um, just sing your prayers sing a simple prayer idea if you know uh, back in the day i don't know within a few years just a simple phrase open the eyes of my heart what just a simple phrase that i had written i had heard a pastor pray that of course, it's from Ephesians 1.18, but just he was about to preach and said, let's pray. God, tonight as we look into your word, we just pray that you'd open the eyes of our hearts and help us to comprehend your mysteries. And just that phrase kind of stuck mm -hmm. out. So, you know, either a Bible study or a prayer time on a Friday night, you sort of, you've already played four or five songs. You're running out of songs, but prayer's still happening. I would just sort of throw that out as a prayer. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. We want to see you. Remember those days? I feel like we used to do that more often. Mm -hmm. Just unstructured times. There was no multi-tracks. There was no click. It was just worship and prayer this Friday night from seven to nine. Come on out. Mm -hmm. And just as a worship team, you just pick a handful of choruses. You'd leave room for someone to come up to the mic and pray, usually praying scripture. Man, those were just the sweetest times. And that's where mm -hmm. these little song ideas or concepts would come from. So I would say that would be my number one thing is keep it simple. Keep your motives healthy. Just keep it local. Think more local. Think about a simple prayer, four lines that my church could possibly sing. So as you, you mentioned your name, at the end of our three songs, we just did the chorus of your name. All right, well, imagine just a chorus. Start there. Imagine at the end of a song, maybe that's where it begins for you. You finish a song and at the very end you go boy what do i want to say now what could i say and maybe you're there's a phrase or a, a characteristic of the lord or one of his attributes and you go oh man yeah let's 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 write a song about that really focuses on that mm. yeah. so, good. Mm. so good yeah well i think an, like another song like that is 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 behold him and like I was leading that last Sunday and it's one of those songs that you can just close your eyes. I'm so thankful for those that I can just play with my eyes closed. I don't need to stare at like half the time I'm doing hymns and I'm like, man, I got to memorize these better. I'm <laughs> just locked in on the chord chart, but a song like behold him, that's rich theology. It's great, but simple, singable. The chords are easy, e beautiful, easy guitar riffs. Like, man, like I love songs like that. And there's such a, that those play a special place in my heart as a worship leader when I'm looking for mm. stuff like that. What, and I'm sure you labored over that, Paul. I'm sure you labored over those lyrics. What are some other songs? I asked this to Bob Coughlin, you know, when the episode that he was on and he had a, he had a fascinating answer. I'm curious, 
what are more songs that we need to sing of in the church? Is there a song that you go, I want to write a song that says this, like, what are we needing to sing more in the church? What do you think? That's a big question. I know, but (laughs) Bob would have such a good answer to this question. (laughs) I feel like I've already failed. Like (laughs) it just didn't come to me like that. I mean, what you just asked Rob is the question before you begin any co-writing situation, you know, or before maybe if you carve out time in the week to devote to developing your song ideas, that's a question we should all ask ourselves. What, what are we not singing about? What yeah. are we, are there any recent songs about the second coming? Um, have we written a song about baptism? You know, like you take the old hymnals, there's, there's things, that we, subject matter that we've just sort of avoided. Everybody's mm. kind of going for the same type of songs these days. But um, so those are just two that come to mind. The second coming, baptism, maybe a baby dedication song. Think of a simple chorus that um, that you could sing during a baby dedication. Hmm. And and maybe you're like, oh, yeah, but that'll never be on, you know, that'll never get on the radio. Well, that's that's see, that's yeah. that's the point. You're messed up. We're messed up on our thinking. So we have to yeah. write songs from a pastoral perspective. Right. And And that's the other aspect that once a song idea was beginning to take shape, Somewhere in that process, I would begin to, in my mind, go, all right, can I picture, I put on that, now that now these days they have that mm-hmm. virtual reality, right? Those things you put on, those glasses or whatever, and you're like, whoa. So I would try to put, imagine the second row, the fifth row, back in the, uh, just people in my church. I'm trying to imagine different generations. Is this something that they could sing, Jesus Son of God, Messiah, you know, and there are many that didn't pass that test, right? Get to a certain point and go, no, nah, I'm trying to get too clever here. I'm trying to do, be too cool. And so, all right, forget that. Let's, let's bring it back here. I, there's a concept here. There's an idea that's worth singing about. But now how do we, how can we finish this in a way that makes, will help others worship? So that's another sort of bullet point if I, in my mind will this song and the way we arrange it will this help others worship the lord mm. or is there anything in the song at some point where like that could be a distraction i mean it's cool as cool as a four minor chord is i love four minors it's so beatly oh i love the beatles you know <laughs> but every time i've tried to do a four minor chord it's like it just it yeah. just t- attracts so much attention it just says look at me look at me kind of yeah um so yeah you're just it's this process with the holy spirit i mean i'm Mm. suffice it to say i'm everything i'm saying right now is not a technique all this is being done like prayerfully all this is being done Mm. in a devotional context you're kind of it's not songwriting like i just open up my pro tools and i'm sitting there trying to come up with with my rhyming dictionary no man this is you maybe take two or three songs of just worship, a simple chorus, maybe a hymn, just to get my heart moving in his direction. Then I open up my book of song possibilities some different verse uh, lyric ideas or, or a title page, a, a page with potential song titles. And, uh, and I'll just use this. Um, we were teasing uh, with Bob Coughlin. There's one line that Bob, you know, and I have, and I, I respect Bob and it's great. And I was like, maybe, maybe you're right, Bob. So the song is above all. And I just thought that phrase above all, there was just in my page, in my journal, there's always a title page, just potential like concepts or song. I just thought that's, that feels like a good song title. I, I remember picturing it like in a hymn book or something, you know, just like above all. Just, mm-hmm. And so the question I asked myself, and you could ask yourself, songwriter would be, okay, what could I say about the Lord? Or what could I say to the Lord with that phrase? And so prayerfully, you're kind of, maybe you're at a piano or maybe with a guitar in your hand, you just get a key center just to get you. And you're just in that place above all, let's see, above all. And I try to think, is there a scripture somewhere in the word that kind of, so I remember thinking in Isaiah, your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. Your ways are just that idea of acknowledging that you are higher and smarter and wiser 
and and just that began like oh okay yeah you're above all wisdom you're above all powers you're above all uh kingdoms and I just remember like writing like a grocery list you know you're above mm -hmm. all almost like an exercise at that point but then just enough there was enough where I was like okay and then my hands on the piano and just there were above all powers above all kings above all uh, nature and see what rhymes with kings so, uh, all created things da 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 so see sometimes you maybe run you don't have the lyric but go with the feeling so da 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 Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, yeah, that feels so. It's this combination of you get a few lyrics, but then go with the feeling. You're kind of worshiping. This is a phrase to consider. Take that little idea you have and worship with that idea. Mm -hmm. Worship with that little idea. Just go ahead and um, play with it with a childlike, playful worship, if you will. Da, 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 da. And another thing is sometimes get away from your instrument because your melodies will be more original. If you're always at your instrument, I find that the melodies always get locked into this chord progression. Mm -hmm. Sometimes walking away for a second and just going, da, 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 you're looking at the lyric and you're just feeling that lyric. It wants to go high or maybe come down or it wants to start here and then go high. Or start up here and come down. Oh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then record yourself, like record that. So, oh, I kind of like that. But I find that you'll get uh, more, your melodies in general will be more original. Mm. Sometimes if you step away from your instrument and you just allow yourself to feel that lyric, feel that scripture. I mean, I've talked about this stuff. You can go plug, it costs nothing. Go to my YouTube page. Um, mm. Uh, YouTube, yeah, Paul Veloz, Lead Worship, and look for my uh, leading worship thing. And scroll down, there's a thing, Ministry to the Lord. And I demonstrate where you just sing scripture. You sing the Psalms. The Psalms are, it's a songbook. It's not meant to be read. It's like buying a Beatles lyric, you know, songbook and just like reading the lyrics. Hey, Jude, don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make, no, man, it was meant to be sung. So let's open up the Psalms, find a place where you're not self-conscious, where your neighbor or maybe your spouse. Go, I used to love going in the sanctuary during the week when no one was there. I'd even turn on the mic, the microphone. I'd hear my voice in the PA and I would just sing the Psalms, sing them out loud. Psalm 92, it is good to praise you, Lord, and make music to your name, O Most High. Start with one note. I mean, you look at um, your name started that way real quick, Pat, and I'll be quiet. Pat, um, Psalm 63, um, as morning dawns and evening fades. Like one note, guys. Every one of you watching this can take the Psalms. That's right out of Psalm 63. As morning dawns and evening fades in one note, just begin to sing that and begin to kind of direct that toward the Lord worshipfully. And then maybe you, maybe you find another, da, 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 you know, that lyric goes somewhere. So good. The melody goes somewhere. So start with just one note. Every one of you can do that. Just find that note. And... Who would have thought one note? That's I was going to say, wow, this is the secret to Paul's success. Just sing. <laughs> sing one note. Paul, a lot of people these days, and you're you're pretty connected to a vast network of people. I know you travel pretty extensively, and you're doing things like the Worship Circle and some Integrity Artists and those kind of things. You've been involved with Compassion Art. Um, it seems like a lot of people these days are writing collaboratively. And uh, do you find that um, an easier thing to do, or is it more complicated? And uh, give us some, some sense of... Um, what tips you might have if, if someone said, I, I'm not sure I can do it, but I want to start writing with somebody else. What would you say for collaborative songwriting? Great. Yeah, I agree with you. It seems like almost every song these days is co-written. So take some pressure off of having to like, from beginning to end, have this like 
mm-hmm. this perfect thing is like the idea is all of us have walked on a beach at some point and you've seen seashells or stones and all that and just that mentality of going through your life songwriting is a lifestyle you you listen to sermons uh, and is there a hook there when you listen to a sermon now listen more actively for like is there a phrase is there a concept is there just one oh wow that is so that's a great go ahead and be an active listener when you're in a prayer meeting you have permission to open your eyes and write down something that somebody just prayed because you're like oh that's such a great song idea maybe so it starts with just being alert in the spirit and and kind of songwriting as a lifestyle it's a creative way to kind of walk with the lord walk in the spirit keep your mind on god on scripture on the things of god always got a little song thing rolling around in your head so the point is you're collecting these things like little rocks like Mm -hmm. seashells you're going oh this is a so you don't have to finish this whole song. That's such a pressure. But you do have this idea that, oh, man, this is such a fresh little thought. And, uh, and you, then you find someone that you respect musically and spiritually. And maybe, you know, maybe within a 50-mile radius of you, perhaps. Um, Pat, you mentioned Andrew. You know, just somebody that maybe has at least tried to write songs or has expressed interest, or maybe they have experience, maybe one's more of a lyric person, maybe you're more of a music person. Say, hey, um, maybe we can get together at the church, find a, you know, a, a common place at, at, at such and such church on a Saturday from like nine to 12 sometime, maybe once a month. And let's just meet and bring a couple of your ideas. I'll bring a couple of mine. And so that's what it's like. That's what co-writing looks like. That you bring a couple inspired ideas. Don't bring every little thought you've ever had. Try to do your own filtering. You've got a whole notebook of ideas. Man, try to show up with like two or three of your best. All right? And the other person should do the same. And then go ahead and play. And you don't, sometimes, man, you're in a room, they play that idea. And it's like, well, you want to keep it positive. But you also don't want to lie. So you don't have to love it. But you can say, Find something good to keep some energy positive, okay? You may go, that's, that's cool. That's, I, that's something there, it's something good. Um, play, play me another idea that you've got going. And maybe they play two or three and you go, man, let's go back to that second idea. Really, for some reason, that just kind of, I really feel that. I really feel something there. So you're trying to keep it positive. Another thing I'll use is the word maybe. So maybe they, they'll throw out an idea throw out a line maybe an additional line and you're trying to work on oh what if you went here what if you... i'll say um if i don't love it right away i'll say maybe maybe let's write it down go ahead let's let's just write that down so i'll write it down it doesn't cost anything to write it down <laughs> i'll say because the goal is well let's try to beat that so let's so let's say you're working on your second verse um, you know you've got second verse you've got four lines you, you know that person throws out a second line you're like you know, in your heart of hearts, you're like not loving it, but instead of going, nah, that's, that stinks, man. That's, that's lame. <laughs> well, the whole room's just going to go. <laughs> so the word maybe doesn't cost anything. And just say, maybe, cool. Let's write that down. All right, cool. And you're not lying or being disingenuous because you know what? You may go back to that and go, actually, I'll be honest. At first, that, that line didn't hit me, but I feel that now. So you're just keeping the wheels moving. So that's what co-writing looks like. Mm. And it's really fun. And the worst thing that can happen is after three hours together, maybe you didn't finish this global anthem (laughs) (laughs) that Hillsong's going to record next week. And uh, we're going to record it in Spanish and Russian. And, uh, (laughs) um, but you know what? The worst case scenario is you spent three hours with a brother or sister being creative with the word of God, with prayerful ideas. You you were thinking about God. You were praying. You were laughing, drinking some coffee, maybe some little Tim Hortons. You know, come on. I'm just saying that's the worst that can happen, man. It's a creative time. You're just, you know, so you got to schedule those things. And also, if you schedule some things, it kind of puts a demand on your heart and mind. It'll, it'll kind of harness, because otherwise nobody's going to fire you if you don't write a song. None of us are going to get fired. So I used to go to my pastor and say, Pastor, I wish you could fire me if I didn't show up every Friday with two finished songs. <laughs> and he would say, oh, well, you know, we'll just pretend like I can. And, <laughs> and uh, 
And I'd say, but I need accountability because if I don't finish a song by this Friday, then no one's going to. So it's a combination of inspiration, but you've also got to, you got to get, you got to roll up your sleeve. You got to work it. You got to work that muscle. You got to actually try to write these and take those prayerful ideas or scriptural ideas, worship with them, play with them. I, again, last, last thing is just, if you really want to know if we had five hours together of what I think about songwriting. So again, on my YouTube channel, I, I uploaded the whole DVD. It's, it's about five hours broken up into eight modules. Actually, it's only three hours, but it's eight modules. And it's just go to YouTube, Paul Balash, lead worship. Oh, scroll down. Oh, there it is. So songwriting, and you can just kind of do one a week or something. And maybe some of, cause we, we only have so much time here, but, um, but it's just a fun thing to do. Keep it in the fun realm. Take the pressure off. You don't have to prove anything to anyone. You have nothing to prove to your band, your parents, yourself, the Lord. It's, a, it's just something creatively. Like when your four-year-old shows up with a hand painting and you go, oh my gosh, look at that. And you put it on the refrigerator and you go, that is beautiful. We're just going to put it right there. So keep your motives clean and pure and just say, Lord, I just want to write something that glorifies you and that will maybe help others worship you. Mm. Lord, if I could be part of that, that would be so fun to just create some, just a little chorus that people in my church would just close their eyes at some point and just pray that song. Wow. That would just be amazing. Mm. That's good. Sorry, I heard the phrase, Paul, uh, perspiration and inspiration takes hard work and it takes the spirit's work all at the same time yeah yes yes indeed our time is kind of running a little bit short so here's let's do the uh the popcorn round here uh quick okay. question and a quick okay. answer we'll see okay. how many we can get in on our remaining time with you guys rob okay. go ahead uh yeah quick question what's the oldest song you have that you're still working on to this day that's like you know you can't crack it for some reason you're not happy with the lyrics do you have something like that um it's funny you say that i will say that there are many songs i could list a couple that you actually might know a few that my wife couldn't believe after years i'm like hey so what do you think about this you'd be like wait wasn't that like from five years ago i'm like yeah but i can't let it go i still think it's worthy there's a concept there it's worthy and um yeah. So, I mean, today is the day is, a, is an example of a, I just could not, that phrase as we, um, I'm casting my cares aside, putting my doubts behind, setting my hearts and minds on you, Jesus. You know, I just really wanted to say that in a song. Mm. And uh, anyway. Hmm. Paul, what, what about, what about specific songs um, in terms of feedback? What do you do with how do you get feedback when you write a song? Mm. Who's who's helping you there? And That's what do you really say? Good. What do you say to guys like us or young people that are out there writing songs? Yeah, I, yeah. I know. I I've had some people who sometimes get quickly bent out of shape. Yeah. Um. Or they're just yeah. holding their grip in that thing really sure. tight. Sure. Uh, so uh, you know, what does that look like for you? And what would you say to somebody? And, and yep. you got a mi minute or less. <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, I've, I've said this to many people that have brought songs to me and I'll say, what do you want from me? You want me to be your mom and just say, Oh, you got, you're great. You're wonderful. I'll be your mom. If you want, if you want critical feedback. And so these are the two things I will tell you, I'm just going to tell you what feels good and what feels funny. Mm. That's it. Cause it's a feelings thing. I, I'm not saying it's correct or wrong or right. I could be completely wrong. I'm just going to tell you what feels funny to me and what feels good. You know what? Mm. That chorus, that feels good. That's, man, that feels really good. Da, 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 da. That, that second verse, man, that feels funny. Some of the things you're, go, you're going off into like mm. Gideon's army and all that. I don't know. That feels funny to me. Um, <laughs> so, so when you ask someone else, I would just say to them, find someone spiritually and musically you respect and say, hey, I know you're busy, but man, can I run two songs by you? And all I want from you is simply to say, tell me what you think feels good about the song. And then also just be honest and say, tell me what feels funny. If there's any like yellow flag, mm -hmm. I use that symbol. I'll say, you know, that's a yellow flag or that's a red flag is like, what, you just can't say that, bro. That's mm -hmm. a red flag. You just <laughs> got to get rid of that. Or a yellow flag is like, I don't know why that line is just funny to me. It's a, either a little cliche or, or maybe theologically, I think it's a little tricky there. So it's kind of a yellow flag. It's, so I'll use that kind of language. 
And then the last thing I'll say is maybe you do a, if you cultivate a community once a month, you guys meet on a certain night or a Saturday morning, everybody brings maximum two song ideas. There's a circle of five songwriters, let's say three or four or five. Each one of you, you, you come prepared with a lyric sheet, you hand out the lyrics. Every person in that group kind of listens to the lyric while the person sings the song. And then the, the only stipulation is, okay, now we're going to go around the room and, and Pat, you tell us, what, what do you think, what feels good about this? Mm. So everybody's forced to find something good. That's so good. Some, you're starting off positive. Well, you know, I mean, the titles really, it's a good title. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Rob, what do you think? <laughs> Rob says, uh, man, what font is this? This is a beautiful yeah. font. Is this Comic Sans? <laughs> oh, <man>. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, so you start positive, and then, of course, all right, great. Well, all right, songwriter, now we're going to go around. We're going to say, does anything feel funny as as person was singing it? And maybe some people, they write, but they don't sing. So maybe find someone in your church, or maybe a younger person that's got a, a good voice. Get them to just even do a uh, on your phone, like a little iPhone just a guitar vocal ask them if they would sing this song for you and do a very simple demo so you just come to the songwriting meeting so that's what i would say it's good yeah 30 seconds uh the little voice inside of your head says you can't do this you don't have what it takes i don't know if you ever dealt with that i know andrew peterson in his book adorning the dark fights against that and um do you ever get that voice that tells you you can't do this your best songs are behind you how do you fight that all the time, all the time, all the time for the last 30 years that I've been writing. Um, anytime I walk into a writer's room, I think, Balash, you just got lucky a couple times. That's it. Mm-hmm. You really, this ain't going to work. But you know what? The bottom line is, I know that's a lie and I trust the Lord. Mm-hmm. And I know that um, I take the pressure off by saying, worst case scenario, I'm walking into this room to write a song that will glorify God, maybe help others worship that would be a that would be our goal and the worst that can happen is i walk out of this room and we'll have just spent time with the lord time in his word how can that be so bad no one's going to fire me i'm not going to get hurt no one's going to shoot me Uh, so i would just say be don't be afraid to fail just write a bunch of average songs don't be afraid to write average songs don't set the bar so high that you're like ah never mind it sounds too much like this song ah before you even get started, you're like, oh, it's not, just let me tell you, everything sounds like something else. Everything sounds like a song you've already heard. So don't let that voice stop you. Hmm. Just keep it playful, fun, sing your prayers, sing scripture, maybe get with somebody else with your inspired ideas, worship with them, play with them. Um, maybe every five or six ideas that you finish play it for your worship team. And maybe there's one that you teach every quarter. Maybe you say, Hey church, Maybe you don't even tell them you wrote it. You say, I'm just going to, we're going to teach a new song this morning. Here's, we're just going to do the chorus. Like goes like this, just like as if you were teaching any other song and just see how it goes. Mm. But that's after you, you've done self filtering and then your worship team has filtered it a little bit and Mm. they all feel like, oh man, wow. You know, Jody, this is great. Mm. This is, I love this. This is so good. Pat, this is beautiful. This is a great song. We should do this. So when you've got that kind of feedback, then at some point, take a risk, mm. try it, you know, mm-hmm. try it maybe on a Sunday morning. Mm. That's good. Well, we're going to close. Paul, you wrote a book called God Songs. I believe that's the title of it. Mm-hmm. It's sitting on my shelf behind me, kind of over there. And um, I guess you've got 200 or 300 pages in that book of what we've been talking about. So um, where do we get that book? Well, physical copies are difficult. Now, when I moved to New York, it's like, I have no garage. I have no place where I'm going to put all these things, right? So you can get it apparently uh, from Vital Source. Okay, so it's called Vital Source. They are a mm-hmm. textbook company, mm-hmm. and um, well, maybe in the in the show notes, I'll get you. I'll get you the link. Okay, where people can find that. Good stuff. Um, but yeah, God Songs. I co-wrote that with Jimmy and Carol Owens, and um, yeah, and then like I said, the uh, the DVD. If you if you like if you're more like a, a learn this type of learning visually um mm-hmm. go to the youtube channel paul Balash. Oh, there it is songwriting boom mm. and uh if you can stand the sound of my voice <laughs> you can hear another three hours <laughs> yeah no we love the sound of your voice and yeah. it has been an absolute joy to be with you thanks brother it's been fun it's been encouraging nice, uh, 
we're we're motivated. We're probably all gonna like finish this, hit you know, hit send and go grab our guitars and and just worship yeah. the Lord. So you have inspired us, and I know uh, exactly. you're gonna inspire a lot of people. So thank you again, Paul, for your time with us. We yeah. love you, brother. Thanks, brother. Thanks for your faithfulness. Thank you, brothers. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir, brothers. God bless you.